All right. Um, before we get to coding, uh, I've just realised that I said that the uh, Wikipedia page for Blocks Blur has a lot of really great information, but I mean, <laughs> I'm looking at it here and it's got a lot of really useless information. Uh, so what I want to do is, um, if you want a bit of a, a write-up uh, as to how this Box Blur algorithm works, um, I'd send you here to Am Amrita. I'm sorry if I pronounced your name wrong. Uh, Mazunda, some, 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 something like that. But uh, thank you very much for your excellent write-up, Amrita. And uh, if if the uh, viewers of my video are interested, uh, I'd send you here instead of Wikipedia. This is a much better write-up. Um, all good. Okay, well, I guess we'd better get on to the coding. Okay, I'm back again. Um, we're here in C++, ready to code a C++ version of the box blur, but uh, there was a couple of little housekeeping things that I should really fix from last shoot. Uh, first of all, despite my amazing explanation uh, last time of why the uh, slider should have a lowest value of 1, uh, the minimum value we're going to actually make 0. Yeah. And I might set the value to 0 as well. Uh, so what we're going to do is um, for 0, uh, we're going to make a box around each pixel. That's um, 0 to the left and 0 to the right. Uh, kind of thing, and then for one, what we're going to do is make that that nine by nine box that we were looking at in the example, and uh, you know, for a value of a hundred, what we do is take a, a a great big box of about two hundred and one pixels squared, so one hundred to the left, one hundred above, one hundred down, one hundred to the right. Yeah, that sort of thing. So it does make more sense to have the minimum value as zero instead of one. That way, if the user wants, they can not blur at all. Uh, what I might also do is call this track bar T R K blur width. Okay, it's not actually the blur width; it's uh, half the blur width, kind of minus one. But yeah, I think you get the point. Um, all right, I want to save that. And the other thing that I want to do is make this box blur in such a way in C plus plus that it's easy to convert to SSE. So I might just make a header called vector or float. I might call it float four. Yeah, I might call it float4, and I might pragma once, and class float4, um, okay, just like that, and we'll add to this as we go, so the um, components of the float4 class just here could be anything, but uh, in this example they're going to be the red, green, blue, and alpha components of our pixels. Uh, they also happen to be exactly the same for floats that you'll get in an SSE uh, vector register. Um, okay, so I think that's pretty good. We might come over here to our box blur window and have a bit of a look at it because I think I've made some mistakes in it as well. Uh, first of all, if you scroll to the top, you might want to include that uh, new vector class that we just made, float4. Um, okay, so right here in my, my declaration section for this uh, box blur form, I've got a couple of temporary uh, image spaces, but we actually need another one. So instead of just original image and front image, uh, we're also going to need a horizontal blur. Yeah, another copy of the image. So this is going to take up an awful, awful lot of RAM, I'm sure you can see, since we're already storing these pictures with a ridiculous um, you know, 32-bit float per uh, component. Uh, but the front image just here is going to be the result from the vertical blur. Yeah, so after we h-blur, we're going to vertical blur those results, and we'll put that in the front image so that uh, image and displays it. Uh, okay, so let's see what's down here. Front image equals data, yeah, that's still right. Original image equals that. Uh, and hblur, okay, so we better declare our hblur as well. hblur equals uh, the same. So both original image is a temporary storage area, an exact copy of the image that we will pass, and hblur is going to be the, um, yeah, the result from the first pass through the image, so that's got to be exactly the same size. Uh, the floats in hblur don't have to be de declared as anything initially, they can just you know, do whatever, and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll calculate the first results for those when we actually do the pass. Um, okay, so that's all fine just there, original image equals front image. If we just scroll down, uh, we're going to have to delete that hblur when the form closes, uh, which is here, delete original image and delete um, 
Thanks for that. Uh, yeah, I think that's pretty good, really. I think that's pretty good. So if we come back over here to our blur form, uh, I'll double click on the track bar to take me to that event when the user changes the track bar's value and we'll start coding our horizontal blur. Um, so the first thing that we want to do is take the date time at the start. I'll just call it yeah, start time, I suppose. Equals date time now. And at the end, we're going to want to call the redraw function so and pass that start time. Yeah, once we're done, just so that image, image and redraws the picture properly. And in between that, we're going to have to do our, our box blur at some point. What I might do is read the um, track bar's blur width. Uh, I'll just store that in a variable called blur width. Oppa. Uh, equals that dot. It's capital value. Okay, that's blur width, and the blur width uh, isn't actually the width of our box, so I might make another value, uh, maybe called float, um, yeah, I guess box width, box width will be pretty good, so the box width is going to be blur width times 2 plus 1. Okay, so the, why did I put brackets around it? Uh, the box width is actually going to be, yeah, left, right, up and down from our uh, middle pixel. Um, yeah, the number of pixels specified by blur width. So that's what uh, box width is there. We're going to use that for multiplying to um, calculate our averages. And the next thing that we're going to need is a few of our float fours. So, yeah, a few temporary uh, float fours just for calculating things. Uh, I'm just going to call them average and tump. And then we might start our horizontal, horiz, horiz, on, hol, horizontal blur. Uh, yeah, we'll start our horizontal blur. So our horizontal blur is going to have to step through all of the rows uh, one by one. So that's the y direction for int y equals zero, while y is less than height uh, y plus plus. Uh, height being the height of the image, of course. In pixels. Okay, now for every row, um, the initial average has to be just calculated outright. We've just got to run through the um, box width, number of pixels, and calculate the average. So we'll do that by first of all um, resetting our average to zero. I might just make another function called zero. Uh, we'll keep adding to this float for class as we go, but the first function that I'm going to add is. Um, void zero, and that goes component zero equals zero, and so do the rest of them. Um, you could go point zero f if you weren't lazy. Oi. Oi. Okay. <laughs> yeah, there's the zero function. So you start to see how I, how I kind of in, am hoping to um, convert this to SSE pretty easily. We'll see how we go. I'm, I haven't actually converted it yet. I don't know. I don't know how easy it's going to be. Um, but the next thing that we've got to do is calculate that average with the um, yeah the first pixels of whatever row we're up to. So four int x uh, equals it's going to be negative um, negative blur width minus one I think um, x is less than blur width x plus plus. Uh, okay, so if if this is our middle pixel here, we, what we want to do is run through a bunch of pixels over here, and a bunch of pixels over here, and sum them all up and average them. So that's what we're doing right here. Uh, I think that's right. Negative blur width minus one. Yeah, I think that's right. Uh, average dot add. Okay, we're going to want to add a pixel to the average that we've calculated so far. Um, when we add a pixel, I might make a little get pixel routine. Uh, yeah. Okay, original image width and height. Okay, this is what I'll make my add function take. It's going to take the x and the y of the pixel that we want to add. It's going to take the source, which for this particular instance is the original image. That's what we're averaging. And it's going to take the width and the height of the image because we want to know where the borders are. You know, we want to add that black or white or whatever the border is. 
Um, okay, so over here, uh, I better make this function in my float 4. That's a void, that's an int, that's an int, that's a float star, and it's not necessarily original image, maybe just img will do the trick. Uh, width is an int, and height is an int. Uh, okay, so in the add function, when we're adding a pixel to this existing uh, float 4 uh, class, sorry, when we're adding a float 4 to this existing float 4 class, uh, what we want to do first of all is check that the pixel is actually within the image's edge. So, uh, if x is less than 0, or y is less than 0, or x is greater than or equal to width, uh, or y is greater than or equal to height, then what we want to do is not necessarily add a pixel from the image, because what we'd be doing then is reading outside of the bounds of the array. Uh, what we want to do is add black or white or something like that. Uh, so for this particular example, I'm just going to do um, component 3, the alpha channel, plus plus. And I'll assume that the other values are 0. So 0, 0, 0 for RGB and 1 for the alpha channel, just like this, is uh, opaque black. Uh, if you were to change this to um, this, then what you'd get is opaque white on the outside. Or if you want, you can wrap around your image and mirror your image. You can do all sorts of things on the border. Uh, but for this example, we'll just plus plus the uh, alpha channel, which will mean uh, black. Yeah, okay, so the next thing that we've got to do is calculate whereabouts in IMG the X and Y values actually reference. So, um, X plus equals uh, Y times width, and X that way equals 2, sorry, the other way, uh, because we're working with floats. So the actual floats that we're talking about are going to be the X plus the Y times width, multiplied by 4, because we're working with floats. Uh, 4 floats at once, sorry, we're working with pixel values. Uh, and then, what we want to do is components uh, 0 plus equals img x plus 0. You wouldn't have to do x plus 0, of course, that's just something I do for um, kicks, really. Uh, yeah, that should do it. So that's going to add uh, all 4 components from some pixel in IMG to the components that this float 4 happens to hold at the moment. Uh, which is very, very good. That's exactly what we want to do. So that's the average function. Uh, the next thing that we'll want to do is divide. After that, we'll want to divide by this box width. So we might want to make another average. Another function, sorry. So I'll just say divide and I'll pass box width. Um, okay, so I better make that function in our float fours, the divide function by a scalar. Um, divide, that's good spelling, well done. Um, I'll just call it F. Uh, okay, so this divide function, after we've summed up our pixels using the add function, we're going to want to divide by however many there are. And uh, the divide function is going to be pretty easy, it's just going to divide each of the values in components uh, by F. which will give us the average. Uh, what you can do, and what I think I might do eventually, is change that box width to be the reciprocal of box width, and instead of dividing, we multiply. Yeah, but we might do that after. We'll see if it's any quicker. I mean, I don't really know. Uh, but after we've calculated that initial average just there, uh, we can run through the rest of the row uh, really quickly using our uh, adding and, and subtracting pixel uh, averaging method that I went through at the start. So. Um, for int x equals, it's going to be 0 by that, and width, and x plus plus. Okay, temp dot 0, we've got to make sure temp is 0. Uh, temp dot sub, okay. Um, yeah, what I'm going to do is make the uh, temp the uh, average of the minus pixel and the plus pixel and then I'm going to add that to this average as we go and store it as the horizontal blur. Uh, I hope that makes sense. Uh, we do need a sub function, so if I just copy the add function, because it's exactly the same, uh, the sub function is going to calculate out exactly the same value. If you 
subtract outside of the bounds of the array, what I might do is minus minus the alpha. Uh, yeah, so the sub function is exactly the opposite of the add function, which would mean that these have all got to be subtract as well. Uh, but I think other than that, it should be the same. So I'll just say that. Uh, okay, so sub, uh, sub what? Uh, x minus blur width uh, minus 1. Y, original image, width and height. Uh, yeah, that's it. So what we want to do, this is a bit confusing actually, we want to subtract the left pixel just outside of the averages that we're currently calculating and we want to add, uh, which is turn it up, add uh, the right hand pixel which is going to be x plus blur width and y and original image and width and height uh, something like that, yeah, and then we want to uh, divide that tump by box width. Uh, so tump dot divide by box width. Do you know what? I'm going to make that a reciprocal now. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. So I'll just call it um, RCP box width, and I'll make it a reciprocal now. And I might just put a point zero F in here so that we. Um, Warning doesn't come up. Okay, so instead of dividing by um, box width, we're going to multiply by RCP box width. Let me just change all of this. Multiply, uh, multiply by RCP box width. Yeah, sorry about that. I know that it's going to be it's going to be slower with divide, so we might just multiply now. Uh, multiply. Should do the trick. Um, yeah, and then after that, we want to add that value to the average. So average dot add, and I might make ampersand tump. So we better make another function in float four that instead of adding a pixel, uh, it adds another float four. So add. Um, I guess float four. What are you doing? Uh, float four star. I guess F. What's the matter? Identify a float four. That's a yeah, that's better. Okay, this um, components zero plus equals F. Components zero. Likewise for the other four. Okay, let's see how we gone. Um, okay, so we add that to the running average, uh, and then we're going to want to write that value in the running average, this average value here, we're going to want to write it to our H blur. Um, what I might do is write it to the front image so that we can see if it's working. Okay, I'll need another function, so average.writePixel, I guess I'll call it. Uh, average.writePixel, x, y, um, front image and width height. Uh, something like that. Okay, X, Y and that. Uh, this is called right pixel. I might just take the um, parameters from subs since they're going to be the same. Uh, what I might do is actually call instead of IMG, I might call this dest. Dest for destination. And first of all, we've got to do this border check. So if the um, X and Y pixels uh, that they're referencing here are actually outside of the image, I'm not sure that they will be. Wait a minute. X and... No, they shouldn't be. Uh, so we probably don't need to do this border check. Uh, but if you do happen to write outside of your image, outside of the zero, uh, you know, left or top or bottom or, or, or right of your image, uh, we don't actually want to write anything. What we want to do is just return. So I might just put that there at the top. Uh, otherwise, uh, we've basically got the opposite to this, so we copy that, uh, but instead of the um, 
components being set to whatever the images pixel is, it's going to be the destination being set to whatever the components are. So um, x plus 0 um, equals components 0. Build. Let's see what happens. <laughs> okay, it succeeded the build. That's pretty good. Um, I'm still in debug. I might put it in release and see if we can't. Oh, this is gonna. Yeah, it's gonna complain about no CLR. So I better turn that on. Um, okay, so common language runtime support apply, and also it's not an EXE. It's a DLL. Thank you. And build. Uh, succeeded. Okay, so at this point, what we should have, what we should have, fingers crossed, we should have a, an, a horizontal blur, a horizontal motion blur uh, plugin. So let's have a bit of a look. I'll copy it into my little image and folder and see what happens. No. Um, okay, so fingers crossed, let's file open and we'll get this picture of the Lambo. Um, show hide plugins, uh, box blur. See how we go. Oh, look at that. Yeah, beautiful. Looks good. All right, so we'll move on with our uh, vertical blur now of those values. Um, so the first thing that we want to do is uh, we don't actually want to write that uh, output to the horizontal blur to our front image. We want to write it to H blur. And if I just delete that line. Alrighty, now what we want to do is perform a vertical blur on the H blur image in uh, pretty much exactly the same way as we just did. So we want to, um, for int x equals 0, while well, x is less than width, x plus plus. Uh, so this time, instead of running through each row, we want to run through each column. Yeah, it's an H blur. A uh, V blur, sorry. So average dot zero. we probably want to zero that again. Do you know what I, I think? Um, I think I could just copy that H blur. I'll just delete that. I think I could just copy this and change all of the um, vertical references for horizontal and kind of, yeah, etc. Let's see how we go. Okay, this is going to be interesting. <laughs> uh, X, X, and this is width. This is X plus plus. Average zero is the same. Uh, this is going to be Y, that's still blur width, this is going to be Y, it's going to be Y, uh, average.add, I think all of that's the same, mind you, I can get rid of those. Uh, average.multiply that thing, um, okay, so this is going to be Y, this is going to be Y, and this is going to be height, this is going to be Y, uh, temp.0, uh, okay, so this is going to have to change a little bit. Um, it's actually going to be y minus that thing, and the x is just going to be by itself. Uh, the rest is the same, and this one's going to be different as well. So it's going to be y plus the blur width, and the x is going to be the same. Uh, Tempt up multiply, average is the same, and right uh, to front image. Um, okay, so the other thing that I've done rather stupidly is that uh, this shouldn't be reading original image anymore. It should be reading 8 blur. Okay, so we've got to change that one, that one, and that one, I believe. I think that's good. So if we just build, there's no, <laughs> there's no way this is going to work. Let's have a look. This is going to be unreal. Uh, I'll copy and we'll paste into here. Uh, replace. Okay, there's no way, there's, 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 actually, there's actually no single way that this will work. There's no way. Let's have a look. Let's have a look at it not working. Um, well, get out of the way for a start. Um, okay. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, that is fantastic. Look at that. There you go. It did work. Okay, so we got ourselves a pretty tremendous box blur. And what's interesting about it is because of the algorithm that we're using, this um, 
you know, double pass algorithm instead of the sliding window that I was thinking about using, you'll notice that the um, really big blur of 100 pixels takes about, you know, 42 milliseconds. And the very, very small box blur takes almost the same amount of time. It takes 40 milliseconds. Yeah, so there's not a great deal of difference between the two, which is absolutely excellent. Uh, what you'll also notice if we go... Yeah, you'll see black creeping in from the side. That's those infinite black pixels uh, surrounding our image, so you can't see them. Uh, but that's what that um, kind of black border creeping in from the side is. Uh, so you could make that white if you want. Uh, in theory, if we if we blurred you know a lot, like thousands, two thousand, five thousand, uh, which we probably can if we, um, what you'd end up with is just a black image, yeah, because the um, colors of the image would be completely irrelevant compared to the infinite black surrounding. Uh, but what I might do just before we go is um, change that black to white. Yeah, so let's see. This is just an example of what you might want to do. Um, okay, so that's there. You'd have to change the add and the sub functions to hoppa, to get that white on the outside. Let's see if it looks any better. I'll just build. Um, okay, that's the box blur and paste. Yeah, I wonder how it's going to go converting it to SSE. I mean, I've tried to make it so that it's easy with that float 4 class, but I don't know. Okay, let's grab our Lambo and hide the plugins, show our plugins and this one. Okay, yeah, there we go. So you can see white creeping in from the side now. Um, I'm sure you can see that it's pretty easy to make your image wrap around if you want. It's easy to do whatever you like, really, uh, within reason. I mean, you can't... <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> um, okay, so that's... Wait, where's it gone? Uh, that's good, but what I do want to mention is that uh, it's actually not very fast. So it's pretty quick with that one, that little Lambo image, but if we grab this huge Marge, Mars picture, I'll just zoom out a bit. So this is this is just a ridiculous la ridiculously large image, uh, about 750 trillion by 50 you know, quintillion pixels. Uh, if we do the box blur on this, what you'll notice is that it's not very fast at all. There you go, about two seconds. Yeah, just a bit slower than two seconds to do a box blur on that huge image. Um, so what I'm hoping is that we can convert it to SSE and get maybe, I don't know, twice the speed up or something around there. And then from there, um, we can move to multi-core and maybe double the speed up or quadruple the speed up again. Anyway, it should be fun, folks. Thanks for watching and uh, have a good one, eh? Where's my little... Alright, see ya.